Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today we got another Detective Williams video and this is when a 197 IQ scientist gets caught for murder. And we will get right into a late show. Make the like button, and subscribe button, comment thing down below. Let's go. You're going to be under arrest for capital murder. Capital murder. This is 39-year-old Michael Payton, a scientist working for Raytheon in their rocket science department. Michael perceives himself as somewhat of a genius, but as you will soon see, not even a scientist can get away with murder. On February 19, 2021, Celine police officers rushed to the Patton family residence in response to a shooting. Little did they know they were about to be thrown in for a loop by the scientist. Michael had called 911 to allegedly confess to murdering his wife and two kids, along with their three dogs and one cat. However, when officers arrived on the scene, Michael, who was standing outside with his gun, changed his story and now claimed he didn't know if his wife and kids were still alive. Firefighters would enter the house to find Michael's wife, Tamara Payton, and his teenage son and daughter already dead from gunshot wounds. Due to Michael's new claims, the police weren't sure if the 911 call was a prank call and Michael is being framed for murders he didn't commit or whether he had done it himself, regretted and changed his mind. Nevertheless, Michael is detained. The thought that someone would prank call him and have him confess to a murder that he didn't, that he could have, no, I can't buy that, no way. ...and brought down to the station for interrogation, with Detective Joshua Armstrong heading it. With the detective's expertise in cognitive techniques and no evidence to go on, the interrogation will be a headstrong game for Michael, a genius scientist, against an expert detective, making this one of the most absurd cases I've ever seen. Let me get the person that's going to swab your hand real quick, and then uh, we'll do that and get those handcuffs off of you, okay? Okay. Please. I'll just sit here and wait. Can't you need something to drink or anything? Please. Water, okay? Anything. I just want it. I'm so confused. What was that? Michael, was that quick enough for you, brother? You go by Mike or Michael? Usually Mike. Hmm? Usually Mike. Okay. Can you stand up for me? I'm gonna get them handcuffs off of you, okay? This is who I was talking about, was going to take a swab of your hands, okay? Are you okay with her doing that? Hey, Mike, do you have any injuries to you right now? Are you hurt anywhere, bleed anywhere, cut anywhere? I have no one. Okay. Well, you, do you mind standing up right here on the swab? Soft. <clears throat> You've got a bruise right here. Is this old? Yes, yeah, so it's a couple of days old. A couple of days old. Okay. Anything on the back side, no cuts or anything like that? Do you mind if I lift your shirt up? For it. Um... You got a, can't tell if that's a scratch over here. You got a cat or something at the house? Three dogs and dogs and a cat. It looks like you got some, maybe a cat scratch over here <laughs> inside. Probably the puppy. Puppy? Can I stand for a minute? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Go ahead, Jason. I was in that car. You were sitting there for a long time. Give me just a second. Uh, here's a cup of water, Mark. Here's your... Give me just a second, okay? Yeah. Michael seems disoriented and uneasy as he paces around the room. Not long after, Detective Ar The part that I find interesting is each time the guy seems to leave, he glances where the camera is. He glances at this camera multiple, like, each time the, uh, this detective seems to leave the room. I know if I'm the only one picking up on that. Armstrong starts by questioning Michael with basic questions, such as the type of work he does. This is done intentionally to judge if Michael is lucid and conscious. If so, then we will know if the confusion we see is all just an act or not. And, uh, and you know, obviously I think you've got some questions that you were trying to ask me a minute ago. Too, but I don't want to be gross. I feel like I need somebody to, to help me with what's going on. Because I don't have any idea what's going on. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, neither one of us have an idea of what's going on right now either because we haven't spoke with you yet, if that makes sense. It does. So we really don't know 
we don't know what's going on. I think I think our hope was that you would help us figure out what's going on as much as us help you figure out what's going on. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what happened. Are you? You sound really short of breath. Do you have asthma or medical condition or anything? Or are you just tired? Or I'm stressed out. I'm just really stressed. I don't know what's happening. Uh, I just want to clarify before before I ask you any questions or you ask me any questions. Um, you said you did understand your rights. You do want to speak with me, correct? Start, but I don't know if I start getting overwhelmed. I want somebody that to... you can stop the interview at any time. Okay. I forgot what I was going to send them on. What was what was your question? You were trying to ask me some questions when we were coming up the stairway. <clears throat> I don't know what's happening. I don't, I don't remember what happened. I remember working this afternoon. What do you do for Raytheon? Uh, configurations. So basically, I. I make sure everything is right before it gets released. Sure, drawings or documents or whatever. I really don't know what Raytheon does. What are the defense, missiles, aerospace? So are you still employed? Is is Raytheon a, is a private contractor? Uh, that's contracted through the government. Contracts and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mainly government contracts. What did, what is it that you do for them? configuration stuff i run a meeting every month with the navy uh, check all the drawings the detective then asks michael if he has ever been in the military curious to know his background is it like classified type of stuff or no, i have my class or i've been cleared classified but i don't work on a classified program currently okay forgive me i don't know much about i wasn't in much about i'm still learning how did you get in? Were you in the military? Is that how you got into that? Or? I got into it later after I took my degree. Is that something anybody can do? Or, like, do you need some kind of. What's the degree in? My degree is in general physics. Okay. So that's why that's the, the physics part of the <clears> business. <throat> Not necessarily for what I do right now, but I can use it for stuff. I understand electronics and schematics. I don't understand any electronics or schematics. <laughs> mm. Were you in the military at all? I was in the Marine Corps. And how long were you there? Six years. Six years? And did you get deployed at all? I got injured on prep for deployment, so I didn't go. I hurt my ankle. Bad or? Sprained it real bad enough that it delayed me past shipping out, so I didn't. What you and the detective do not know is that Michael had a streak for lying about his achievements. He's known to have allegedly spoken about the various battles he was a part of while in the military. But now, Michael has decided to tell the detective the truth. It's not certain, but it may be that he does not want to risk lying about small matters and instead focus on hiding his crime. You got a pretty impressive background. Between the Marine Corps and then the Raytheon stuff. Try it. Well, tell me a little bit. I don't. I don't know anything about you, Michael. Uh, I'm. I'm trying to piece together the puzzle. I think the same way you are. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, what do you? What do you like doing? What's your family like? And who you know? I mean, wife and I have been together since I was 19, and she was 18. My two kids. She's a nurse. Her daughter's a swimmer. Pretty good. Son's high functioning autistic, but he manages some days. Other days that or all doesn't help. I like music. You collect vinyl? A lot of it? I just started not too long ago, probably two years ago. How much do you think you got? 40, 50 albums. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not hardcore yet. I like music, I like hanging out with my kids. I've been binge watching a TV show lately. Just on the episode or two. What show is it? Supernatural. You seen Supernatural? I don't know. 
I don't know that I've even heard of it. So we've been, we've been watching that. Um, I play video games every once in a while, but I'm not that into it. It's just been occupying my time. Been getting back into working out recently. Trying to better myself. You going to the gym or doing it home? Gym, but we're working on buying something for the house. Like a home gym thing? You go in the garage? What, uh... You said your son's half-functioning autistic. How old is your son? 13. 13. Here, Michael is referring to his son and daughter using the present tense, as if to show he doesn't remember what happened to them, but his memory only seems to short-circuit when it comes to his family, as the evil genius seems to remember things like the exact time when he started collecting music. Say half function. there's so many different kinds of autism out there. What is, uh, what is his specific? He's, um... Anxiety, uh, he was kind of not antisocial, but busy social environments. Um, he had a delayed learning. He didn't speak until he was like four. And so usually, the, like I said, the auto tends to help. Interesting. So this guy's memory. So if we're going by this guy, this thing. This guy has a memory for some things. Thing he taught. Every, he will remember exactly when his. Uh, he will remember when exactly he started collecting vinyl, but he won't remember what happened the night he turned in. The jail for. Some days it does, and some days it doesn't. Yeah. He's very easily addicted to screens. Addicted to what? Screens like video games, his phone, man, stuff like that. He does taekwondo. He seems to enjoy that. That gives him some some structure. Focus. Yeah, it gives him something like you know, specific movements, and he's able to practice it. And how old was your daughter? How old is she? You said she does some swimming stuff. Yeah, she is 14. The detective's use of past tense in asking about the daughters is a mild confrontational technique called the read technique, which Michael seems to have caught on to easily. Anyone in their right mind who didn't know what exactly happened to their family wouldn't have paid so much attention to the detective's words as Michael seems to have been doing. Why did you say? I'm just trying to learn who your family is. I don't know anything about them. You said how old she was. I, I don't know why I said that. I'm just trying to figure out about your. Yeah, that's a little nice trick. Because he wouldn't pay. You wouldn't really pay attention to that. I wouldn't be paying attention that detailedly to what he said. I, it would have glossed right over me until I would have thought about it later. Later on, I would have caught on to it. I wouldn't have thought about this. I wouldn't have thought this carefully about it. About his words, but he's choosing to. Your He's really trying to figure about you, and she's yeah. she swims whatever events, and the meets are open, and you schedule whatever events that you want the kids to swim. It's not structured. I mean, sometimes the coaches will say, "I won't even this event." Like the different strokes, and like like Michael Phelps kind of stuff, like the butterfly and all that stuff. Yeah, there's only four strokes. Why do you think we're here today? I'm, I'm confused on why we are here. You don't remember anything from today? I think, I think of this the other day, my wife was... Uh, we've been working lately, we haven't been... We've been struggling a little bit. <clears throat> I've been trying to work on it. Uh, I was going to counseling I have been on a few weeks. So I've been going to counseling. And struggling Saturday night. She had one of the guns and was saying that they're only way out. Said so, one um, She said the only way out was to <clears throat> basically push up and I wouldn't leave the room. And I wouldn't leave her alone. I kept trying to get the gun away from her. After about two hours, I got it away from her. But, you know, 
basically like called in to try to get her some help. They take her personal license away. And I didn't know what to do. Her best friend came over and she ended up staying the night. And maybe that was Sunday night because she was there all day. Monday. I've been watching, I've been afraid that she was going to hurt herself. I hit the guns. Notice how Michael avoids and refuses to meet the detective's eyes, except for when he's confronted, where he stared at him without blinking, as if silently challenging the detective. When he has confirmed that the detective knows nothing about what has happened, Michael starts to introduce a story as to how his wife was suicidal, which would explain her death. Was Heather. She worked with her, or a high school friend? Or... Okay. You know what Heather's last name is? <clears throat> She's still forks, but I think she's still using Weber. Heather Weber? That rhymes. So she, so this was, you think, last Sunday? Yeah, like a couple days ago, Sunday night, maybe. Okay. Do you know what today is? Thursday or Friday? Yes. Today is Friday. Yeah. Okay. So last Sunday night, this still happened. Did you end up ever contacting anybody, or you just kind of let, let the friend kind of? I let the friend. I've been talking to her. She was doing better throughout. She was talking to me, you know, opening up. And that's, I thought we were doing better. And she agreed that she took up this counseling with me. And she said that, you know, she's been waffling on it back and forth for about a month. She agreed she'd go. I told me I might not like all her answers, but that she would go because I thought it was important. <clears throat> and so I was going to look into it, and it was... And so you, you said you hid the guns? Where'd you hide those at? Um, I had one of them was up in my office that I was... I didn't use it this week, but I've been using it for a few months in, in the extra bedroom upstairs. And it was up there. And then the other one was, I did it in a bag. I was planning on putting them in my truck and trying to find a friend to take them to for a little while until it blew over and felt like she was better. How many guns do y'all have? Two. Are they both handguns or rifles? It's both handguns. Do you know what they are? There's a Walther, it's a 22 and a 9 millimeter Springfield. Springfield. I used to have a Springfield now, no I just traded it for a block. Like blocks. I didn't like them until I started carrying them. I learned a level, so. Michael's aim is to try and paint a picture of an unstable wife who's suicidal and who might have had a breakdown which resulted in her shooting their kids and herself. He may plan to offer this as the rational solution to his family's death, but he clearly hasn't thought the plan through. Did your wife ever had any suicidal stuff prior to this week? years ago she had thoughts of it we worked through it hmm. we worked through it worked through it has she ever had any kind of a medical treatment for it or anything like that she she just started opening up about when she was in maybe middle school or high school she went to counseling just recently told me that you know she was abused when she was a kid and that that's why she's been not wanting to go to therapy with me because she doesn't like the experience. Physical abuse or physical abuse? Told from what she's told me. Do you know who it was that done it to her, like a family or boyfriend? I think it was friends of her dad and okay. maybe her stepdad. <clears throat> what she been? She told me about one including when she was living with her dad in Michigan. There was um, the neighbor. She was babysitting and woke up to him over and there was other ones that she didn't tell me about she told me oh so you just like not just one thing or not just one person kind of multiple yeah. Yeah. and so she's she's struggled with that before and Listen, I don't know how much of this is true or not but if this guy is lying this guy is lying to an extreme ex like extent like he's 
somehow put a lot of thought, yet not a full amount in to get the response. Like, he's trying to put as much in that they believe him, but not so much that they can get, uh, probably check it out. So, like I said, we work through it. And I've been trying to work through the issues that we've been in. It's happened. I've never been great with sharing my emotions, and that's why I went to counseling. I'm trying to be a better husband, a better dad. I've been able to reconnect with my kids a lot. Like, mm -hmm. we have a lot more conversations, and daughter opens up to me a lot more. Have you ever read the book Five Love Languages? Detective Armstrong then asks Michael about his religious beliefs, again to check his memory and cognitive impairment. What all religions was it that, that you studied in that class that you kind of were, took bits and pieces from? Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hindi, or Hindu. Always struggle with how you so you classify that. You make a lot. Did you ever read the Quran? I know Quran, Quran. Am I saying it right? Is it Quran or Quran? I think it's Quran, but I never read it. I just kind of studied what it was about and kind of some of the things that it taught. I've got a lot of buddies that were in the Marine Corps. And for some reason, it was a popular thing among them to read the the Quran, but I think it was because they were deployed overseas, and it was it was a book that you know every house they went into there was it was easily you know readily available, so it was just you know something to kill time or whatever. So I've got a lot of buddies that you know that's not their religion, but while they were overseas, they read the Quran just because it was there, I guess. After he's confirmed that Michael is indeed lucid enough, the detective starts asking Michael about the events that took place before he was brought in. Well, Mike, can you, uh, can you just walk me through what you do remember from today, and that way we can kind of try to piece together while we're here today? We're working. We're talking with my coworkers. Or... I think I took a shower. And I came back down to the wife and we were talking about we wanted to buy a new mattress. The one we have is too soft. It dips really bad in the middle. Is it normal for you not to remember your day? No. You feel it like happened, it happened the other night. When my best friend came over, I was still awake. It was. I don't know what time it was. And they were, they had passed out in the bed and I didn't want to intrude or anything. So I, I set up the couch. Before I lay down on the couch, passed out. And my wife actually came out to just check on me and she found me on the floor. What happened? I don't know, I passed out, I don't know. I was tired. I remember standing there thinking, I get on the couch and then I woke up on my back and the little floor. You said a minute ago you had you had them scratches on your back. You said you had how many dogs? Three. Three dogs? What kind of dogs are they? Two pugs and a bulldog. Two pugs and a bulldog? They all stay inside? Mm -hmm. Pain? It's a lot of dogs in in one house. Why do you think you're having trouble focusing, or why do you think you can't remember stuff from today? It's not, you ask, have trouble remembering stuff, and it's not that I do all the time, I do sometimes. It's, I had a really bad concussion in high school, and so my short term to long term memory isn't always there. That's one of the areas that pissed my life off, is that we talk and I wouldn't necessarily remember it an hour later and I didn't want to reiterate every go of the conversation. 
Michael has once again gone back to playing dumb and not knowing what happened. He even claimed to have short-term memory loss, but the detective is not going to fall for it. And try to go chronological throughout your day today from the time you woke up, and what happened, you know, what you did, what you ate, and what you did for breakfast, and what you did for lunch, and what you did for work, and, and just kind of see if maybe you can piece together, you know, what happened today and and why we can't remember it. I'll give this detective credit. Detective's really good at his job in talking to people. The detective's very good at kind of making people feel like the people feel comfortable, criminals that he needs to interrogate. Good at what he does. Do you remember what you ate for breakfast? I didn't. No breakfast at all? Toast weapon. Did you eat anything for lunch or was that your lunch, the toast? Do you think for dinner tonight? So, is incredibly awkward. I'm not even gonna lie. The amount of silence we have dealing with right now is way too awkward for me. And I'm like... Somebody I can't remember, and I don't, don't know what to do. Do you remember the police coming to your house this evening? I remember being on the sidewalk on my face. Okay. Detective Armstrong's patience while waiting for Michael to answer what he had for dinner that night is impressive to say the least. I'd say I wouldn't have the time for this. I wouldn't have the time for this. I got to do. I got a murder song, boy. It's amazing how Michael can remember countless information about other days except the day of the crime. I'm going to be honest with you. Can you be honest with me? You called 911 tonight? 911? And you told the dispatcher that you wanted to kill yourself. Do you know why you would tell them that you wanted to kill yourself? In the last 10 years, there's been three times that I've wanted to kill myself if I said that tonight. If you want me to be honest with you. 
in the last 10 years you wanted to kill yourself three different times? There's three moments. Three moments? I never did it. What are those three moments? One of them I got before I went back to school. I got screwed over. Boss. Everything had been going really good. Hold on, I'm a man that critiques little things, right? There's a little thing that don't matter. Cool. I got screwed over. Boss. Everything. That's not how you spell going. I'm sorry, I'm the guy that notices things. G O N I N G is not going. That's gone in. And that's not a word. It had been going really good. I'm working on literacy right now in school, and I trust me, I know real shit. I didn't see it coming, I didn't protect myself. I failed my wife, I failed the kids. We are in a really bad place as far as financials go. And I wasn't doing well coping with with it, it was, it was a hit to me. And there had been rumors that my wife had slept with a coworker. She told me it wasn't true, but it was just another Something else to add some stress. How were you wanting to hurt yourself today? No. No. I want to help you, Mike, but you've got to remember. I've been trying since I've been trying to draw my memory, walk through my day. So I was doing the whole time I was in the back of that car. After listening to Michael go on about his life, the detective asks him about his wife, and it seems like Michael can go from not remembering the day to remembering vivid details about it in a matter of seconds. Other than like what she ate, you know, did your did your wife work from home today too? Or she going she to always does. Huh? She works remote. It's, did she yeah, it's permanent remote for her. She do that today? Every day. What are her off days? Oh, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So she worked today then? Yes. Yeah. Today's Friday. Do y'all work in the same room or separate rooms? This week we worked in the same room, just trying to save electricity and heat and everything with what's been going on with the, the, the weather and stuff. And so we were trying to condense where we were so we didn't have to heat as much. and use as much electricity so I, I sat in the chair and she was on the bed and we were being pretty playful and bantering I remember that we were sending her some playful texts sending her texts like while you're in the same room together or yeah yes, we've always done that yeah just kind of keeping things fun well, she's, you know, in a meeting, they can't necessarily see oh, things and stuff. So. so does she see patients? Like, is she, like, FaceTiming patients, or...? You know, they, they, they contract a, a pharmaceutical company. Okay. Well, I think we're getting a little bit further because you remember sending text messages to your wife today, so... That's earlier. About what time you think that was? Early after. Morning. Okay. Remember what she was wearing today? Sure, yesterday.
One more time, sir. Can I talk to a lawyer, please? I'm in so far over my head. I don't know what's happening. Okay. That's is that's perfectly your right to do so, sir. We can get you an attorney to and then uh, speak with you after you have an attorney. If he was a genius, he would have never talked to the police without a lawyer in the first place. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that Michael is clearly guilty and he's just playing a really silly attempt at deceiving the detective. But, unfortunately for him, he will soon find out that his performance wasn't worthy of an Oscar and he's actually going to jail. I'm sorry. You're perfectly fine. You're going to, uh, you are going to be under arrest, okay? And you're going to be taken over to the Collin County Jail. You're going to be under arrest for capital murder. Capital murder. Mm -hmm. You caught me a minute ago whenever I used past tense instead of present tense. No, 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 no. Well, now, now. Here's what I need you to do, Michael, okay? I need you to stand up and turn around and face that wall for me, okay? Stand up for me. Turn around and put your hands on the floor here. Well, don't put your hands on the wall, just face the wall, okay? No, 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 no. No, no I didn't. Did not hurt anyone. thinking when he did what he did. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What the hell is his ass thinking? Especially, why would you take the life of your kids? And you, listen, taking the life of your significant other, it happens a lot of times. It happens way too many times than we wish it did. But you can figure it out just fine. Why would you take the life of your children and your dogs and your kids? Especially, you know, children and your dogs and that? Like... The detective has had enough of Michael's pathetic acting. What's intriguing is Michael's use of dumb mannerisms to make himself act as if he didn't remember a single thing, even acting like a child who got caught stealing a cookie. Mark, don't fall down on me. If you're going to do it like that, sit down on the Michael's next words would be the final nail in the coffin. This one is not true. Please. Are you talking to me or so? This one is not true. Your daughter is deceased. He started reacting like he had just been stabbed. I don't know what his reaction was to that. That was so weird. I would never. 
It's shocking that Michael thought he could outsmart the detective and get away with it. Impossible to do so when he literally called 911 and explicitly confessed to his crime. And for those of you who didn't catch on to it, Michael said, I would never. Despite the flawless acting, Michael was finally arrested for his crimes. Detective Armstrong provides a detailed report of things that Michael remembered, ranging from having a toast at 11 to sending playful texts to his wife. This is evidence that Michael is not as clueless as he claimed to be and is lucid enough. Finally, Michael Patton was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. If you enjoy What an amazing video to watch. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comment section. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.